So if we want to expand binomials, okay, if we want to expand something like, let's say, um, a plus b to the power of anything, not just 2 or 3 or whatever, but to the power of n, where n can be whatever you want it to be, either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or a million, whatever, then there's got to be some way to do these in general. And there is. It's actually called the binomial theorem. So I'm going to start right away with the formal notation. So right away I'm going to start off with maybe what you might think is one of the ugliest equations ever. So while I write this down, do not throw up. Uh, I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to take our time to get to this. So I'm going to show you how to expand a binomial of any size. So the formal notation, the binomial theorem, is actually this. a plus b to the power of n is equal to, now here we do a to the power of n. And then what we do is we do this weird thing called n1 like this. I'm going to explain what this actually means. All that times a to the power of, and here we're going to do n minus 1, all that to the b, uh, times b to the power of 1, plus, and we're going to keep going, until we get sort of the generic middle term here. This will be sort of how they all work. It's nr, and then we have a to the power of, in this case it goes n minus r, it goes b to the r, and then it goes uh, plus, and you keep going until you reach something that just goes b to the power of n. Now this is actually the binomial theorem. Now you might feel like vomiting when you see this. Because this looks absolutely gross, I think. But once you've gotten used to it, and you can sort of pick out what's really going on, then it's actually a very, very fast way to expand anything you like. So I don't want you to sort of cry yet. We're going to take our time. In fact, um, in the next two videos, I'm going to slowly work our way until we can actually get to this. For right now, let's just concentrate on what this thing right here means, like this N1 or this NR in this case. So in general, this NR, what does that actually mean? This is actually something that we call combinations. So in mathematics, we often write it like this. With a C, that means sort of combinations of NR. And what this really means is that's the number of combinations, in other words, the number of different ways. So the number of combinations, um, in this case, uh, let's say possible. And we're going to say of n objects. And in this case, we're going to take them r at a time. And even that might sound confusing. So that's why before dealing with this equation, I want to first show you what this first thing here means. This nr, n1, or n whatever you want here. So this, this thing here, this what this tells you is the number of combinations possible of taking n objects if you take them r at a time. And so what I'd like to do is maybe show you a little example of what I mean by this. So let's say you have four people. Let's say you have four people. So keep in mind, I'm not showing you how to work with this now. We're just sort of we're just sort of dealing with this thing right here for now. So I'm sort of indenting this within this here. So this N R. So just showing you how to deal with this. Let's say we have four people. Uh, we're going to call them A, B, C, and D. So maybe the names are I don't know. Let's say A, um, Albus. I think it's from Harry Potter. Uh, B could be uh, Beulah. C could be Calliope, let's give these people some fun names. Um, D could be Dolores. So they're just handily named A, B, C, and D. So if we call them A, B, C, and D, oops, I didn't mean it to be a line like that, A, B, C, and D. So the question is then, um, how many ways can you pick two of them? That might be our question here. So how many ways can you pick two of them? So let's just say you're looking at all four of them and you're trying to make, uh, I don't know, maybe teams or something like that. So you want to you wanna figure out how many different combinations are there of picking just two of them. I hope you see that, well, you can start off by picking A and B together. That's one combination possible. Now keep in mind, B, A is the same as A, B, so we're not going to count them twice. So how many ways can you pick two of them? Well, AB, that's one of them. AC is one of them. AD is one of them. Um, now that you've started with A, so maybe then you go BC and BD. 
and maybe then just CD. These are the only poss uh, possible combinations. So in other words, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six ways. So there exist six different ways or six different combinations of picking them. Now let's see how to use that with this formal notation here. So what could we have done? We could have actually said, okay, well, we're trying to do the number of combinations of n objects. In this case, number of combinations of four people taken two at a time. So this is how we would do this. So C42, that would actually be equal to six. That's how we would actually do this. Now how can you actually, so that means we could sort of write it like this, 4, 2, we normally write it like this, that equals 6. That would be the notation we would use, NR. This tells you number of combinations of 4 people taken 2 at a time. That would be this 4, 2, that equals 6. How do you do it on your calculator? Um, if you use a TI-83 or TI-84, then I would do this, I would do math and then choose PRB, that's a probability, and then choose this NCR, that's the notation we're gonna use. So I'll show you with my trusty calculator here. So if I press math, and I go to the right to choose probability here, so I'm gonna to go to the right to choose probability, and see it's the third one down, NCR. That's the one I would need. But now the way you do it now, it needs to know, like there needs to be a number before and a number after. So really how you do it is you would do this. You would say 4 NCR2. That's how you would do it. Because in other words, you have to say 4 is the N value and R is 2. So what you would do on your calculator, you'd actually write 4 NCR2 and press equals. So let's do it like this. So this is how you would actually do it. You say 4. So I type 4 here. Then I go to math, perb, and I choose NCR. So that means I'm saying that N is 4. And what's R? It's 2. That's sort of a way of sort of sneaking these things into your calculator, telling it what N is and what R is. So you say 4 NCR2, and that gives you also 6. So again, that tells you that's the number of combinations of four students if you take them two at a time. All these different things just show you the exact same thing here, that we're doing combinations. So now what we're going to do is take this and try to deal with how to do the binomial expansion. Now I'm going to show you in the next videos, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing the binomial expansion. One, I consider the sort of fun way. We're going to look at what's called Pascal's triangle. We're basically going to circumvent this entirely. So we're going to basically just learn an algorithm. We're going to say, just do this and it works. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to really use this actual equation here. So we'll see how to do it. And we'll see how they actually give you the same thing. So it doesn't really matter how you want to do it, either with this equation, which may look ugly, but once you realize what things are, it's not so bad, or you can just use the Pascal's triangle method.